video we're going to have a look at enlargements. Now we're not going to do any practice questions on any of these just because obviously the nature of doing them on a screen but I'm just going to show you some processes and ways of actually get, going about completing some of these enlargement questions. Now we're going to kick off with this question so it says enlarge the shape by a scale factor of 2 from the centre 1 1. Now obviously we need to just identify that coordinate first so across 1 up 1 gives us a centre of enlargement just here. So this is where we're going to enlarge it from and I almost kind of imagine this like a little bit of a torch and it's currently projecting this image here that we can see on, on the grid there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to obviously project it somewhere else. Now a scale factor of 2 means it's going to get twice as big. So it's going to be projected twice as big somewhere else within this grid. Now there's a little process to go about actually finding where it's going to be projected. Now all I do is I, I just find one of the points to start with. Now I can pick any of these points. I'm going to go for this top left one just here. And all I want to think about is at the moment from this little projection point, the little cross that I've got in red there, how do we get to that little cross that I've uh, highlighted there in the green? Now if I look at how I actually get to that, I go up one, two, three, and across one. So that was three up and one across. Now for a scale factor of two, all I'm going to do is think of that as a movement. You can always think of it as a vector. Uh, and I'm just going to double that. So at the moment it's going up three and across one. Now if I want to double that, obviously which is what we're going to do for a scale factor of 2, instead of going up 3 I'm going to go up 6 and instead of going across 1 I'm going to go across 2. So going back to the original place, and I'm just going to get rid of these lines here, so back from the original sort of like torch or centre of enlargement, if we're thinking about it from there, I'm going to go up 6 from that point, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I'm going to go across 2, so 1, 2. And that right there is where that point is going to go. Now, obviously, we could do this with all of the points. So I could, there's obviously four or three other points there that I could I could look at. We could do this one here, we could do this one here, and we could do this one here. But actually, I can get away with not doing any more once I've done that first point there, and I'm happy with where it's positioned. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the shape in twice as big from that point. Now, the only thing you have to be careful of is obviously the point where we are was this point just here. So I don't want to redraw the shape from, it, from any of those other three uh, points there. I just want to redraw it from that one point. So at the moment it's two across, so it's getting twice as big. So it's not going to be two across, it's going to be four across. So I'm going to draw this in, in a different colour. So we're going to go one, two, three, four across. Now at the moment it's three down, this one here, three down, so that's going to be six down. So from that point I'll go six down, one, two, three, four, five, six. And don't worry if it is overlapping at any point. The one bit down the bottom there is only one across, so that's going to be two across when we double that. And then we just need to connect those up now. We've got all of those sides drawn in. There we go, and connecting that up. Now it might ask you to obviously label it a particular letter or something like that, and obviously these question, this question doesn't. But if it does ask you to label it, obviously just stick your label inside there. You don't need to worry about shading it in or anything like that. What's important is that those corners or the vertices are in the right places. And that's all we have to really do for an enlargement. So we pick a point, move it via that scale factor, and then draw it in however much bigger that it's asking for in that particular question. But there we go, that's that first one. Let's have a look at just applying this on some other questions. But as you're going to see, I'm going to follow this very similar approach. There are other approaches. I know you can do things like the ray method. You can draw sort of um, lines coming out the centre of enlargement. I find it a little bit more confusing in this way, though. I think this is just a nice, simple way of completing an enlargement. So let's have a look at another one. OK, so a very similar question. This is enlarged a shape by a scale factor of 2 again from centre 0. Now, obviously, there's lots of different ways of describing centre 0. It's right here in the centre where the uh, x and y axes uh, meet, but it can also be called the origin, or we could call it the coordinate 0, 0. Lots of different ways that we could actually describe that point, but centre 0 is the origin there right in the middle. Now, again, it doesn't matter which point that I pick. I'm going to go for this top point again. So I'm just going to think, how do I actually get to that point? Now to get there, look, this time we go one, two, three, and one across. Actually, it's exactly the same again. Maybe we should go for a different point. Let's go for a different one, just so it's a bit different. OK, so it doesn't actually matter which one we go for. Let's just go for this, uh, this closest one here. So to get to that one there, that's one down and one across. So it's one down and one to the right. So if we're going to do scale factor of two, we just need to double that. So to get that point again, I'm going to go two down and I'm going to go two across. So again, back to the original place, back to that center of enlargement, we'll go one, two down, and one, two across, and that's going to end up just there. Now again, that's that bottom left corner, that's this one here. So I just need to redraw this triangle twice as big 
obviously from that bottom left corner there. So currently the triangle's base is two along, this one here. That's two across, so that's now going to be four across. I'm going to do that in a different colour again. So I'm going to go four across, so one, two, three, four. And then the triangle at the moment is four high. So if we double that, that's going to be eight high. So again, it's going to overlap, but let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go, just double check that you have actually done that up eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah, that's fine. And then you can connect it all together. And again, it is overlapping, but don't worry about that. That's not a problem. But there you go, that is that triangle enlarged by a scale factor of two from that center there. So again, just thinking about that, all you've got to do is count from the center enlargement to the point. Obviously you can note that down to the side or you can do that in your head. And we're just going to double that movement. So rather than going one down, one across there, we went two down, two across. And you can always check one of the other points. So obviously this one here, which I did initially. To get to there, it was it's one, two, three up, and one across. But actually, doubling that is six up, two across, and if we just double check that, I'll do it in a different color here. So six up from there, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then two across, one, two, look, lands us there on the top of that triangle. So as I said, you don't actually have to do, um, do all the all the vertices there uh, via that process you, once you've got the one point you can just draw it in twice as big it saves yourself a bit of time but if you do want to check it obviously feel free to actually have a check and just make sure that you have put them in the right place let's have a look at another one okay so something slightly different here we've got an enlargement and we've got a fractional scale factor here so it says enlarge shape a by a scale factor of one third from the center zero one so zero one is just here, which did actually already have a cross on it there, but that is the center zero one. Now if we have a look at how we're going to approach this, because a third is obviously you know, not going to make the shape any bigger, in fact it's going to make it one third of the size, so we're going to have a look at how to actually approach this, but the shape is going to get one third of the size here, or dividing each side by three if we think about that in a slightly different way. But again, following the same process, look if I pick a point, let's pick this one as it's the closest, to get to there it's one, two, three across, one, two, three up. So that was three across, and three up. Now obviously these movements aren't going to get bigger here as it's a third, so a third of three is one, so instead of going three across we're going to go one across, and instead of going three up we are only going to go one up. So if I come back to that original place there in this for the center of enlargement, I'm going to go one across which gets me to here, and then one up which gets me to there. So that is where that new point is going to be, and obviously remembering that is this particular point just here and we're going to draw that shape in one third of the size so let's have a look at how we do that now at the moment this shape which is called shape a is one two three four five six high and it's three across we've got three going down here and we won't worry too much about the diagonal we'll sort that out as the last one so at the moment that one that's going six up well a third of six is two so it needs to go two up so let's swap to a different color here so we'll go two up there we go, that gets us to there. It's going three across on the top, so that's only going to go one across to there. It's going three down on the right hand side, so a third of that is one again, so that's only going to go one down. And then we can just connect those up. There we go, and that's our final shape there. So it seems a bit weird when it says an enlargement and the shape's actually getting smaller, but because it's being enlarged by a fractional scale factor, that's just the language that we use there. So it is getting smaller, yes, but it's getting enlarged by a fraction, so it is actually there, therefore making that shape actually smaller. So it seems a bit strange with the language there when you have a shape getting smaller, but they're using the word enlarge, but that's just down to that fractional scale factor there. But that's how you would approach it if there's a fractional scale factor as well. So following exactly the same process, but obviously just making those movements smaller rather than bigger. Let's have a look at something else. Okay, so this question says, describe fully the single transformation that maps shape A onto shape B. Now obviously you can see, hopefully from the shapes there, that neither of these shapes have been rotated, reflected, or anything like that. It's just purely that one's bigger than the other. So one, so if you're looking from A to B, it's getting bigger, or potentially from B down to A, it's actually getting smaller there. Now obviously when we're describing this, First thing first, we actually need to know that the shape is being enlarged. So hopefully you can see that just by looking at it and it's an enlargement. And that's one of the first things that we have to say when we're describing these. So we have to say that it's an enlargement, so we'll write that down. So it's an enlargement. And there are two more things that we need to mention. So obviously we need to mention what the scale factor is, and we need to mention where that center of enlargement is. So the scale factor is actually quite nice and easy for us to find. If we have a look at this side uh, on, the, on the right of shape B here, it's one, two, three, four, five, six down. So we'll label that as six. And this one over here, the little one, is one, two. Obviously looking at the similar sides there, it's two down. So it goes from six 
down to two, okay? But if we're looking at it from shape A onto shape B, we're looking at the fact that it's going from two to six. So if we, I mean, you don't, hopefully you'll be able to actually spot what that is, but if it is a complicated one, you can do the bigger side there, six, divided by the smaller side, and that tells us that it's getting three times bigger. So my scale factor is gonna be three. So it's an enlargement. We're gonna say scale factor three. There we go, scale factor three. Obviously thinking about if that was the other way around, it would be scale factor of one third. Two divided by six would be a third. Obviously it is saying A to B, so we don't need to worry about that. But just thinking about obviously if it was the other way around, it would be a scale factor of a third. Now let's get rid of these, because the last thing we need to find is that center of enlargement. Now this isn't the easiest to do on the screen, because preferably you need a ruler and a pencil for this one. But in order to actually find the center of enlargement, all we have to do is pick similar points. So I'm gonna go for the bottom right corner on both and we're going to join those up. Now, ideally with a ruler and a pencil, so I'm going to have to do this as best I can. But when you join these up, there we go, you just extend it all the way through the graph, and you can extend it all the way to the end if you want as well. Now that's one line. Now, we really, we do need one more. You can probably actually get it just from the one line there, but I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to pick these bottom left ones here, this one and this one, and I'm going to join those up, again, ideally using a ruler, but and there we go, joining those up together. Now what you'll find is that those two lines cross over on the center of enlargement there. So hopefully you can see it's just down here. So those two lines have crossed over and that is actually where our center of enlargement is. So we're gonna say that. So it's an enlargement scale factor three, center of enlargement, that's not a C, hold on, there we go. Center of enlargement. And in fact, we don't even have to say center of enlargement. We could just say the center, so center, and just give that as a coordinate, center zero, zero. For this particular one, we could just say center zero or at the, from the origin, but it's an enlargement, scale factor three, center zero, zero. And again, once you've drawn those lines on, you can always feel free to check that. You can follow that same process that we've been doing. So to get to this corner here, look, it's one, two across and one up. And obviously to get to the other one, if we times that by three, it would be six across and three up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one, two, three up. There we go, so it does actually work there. Okay, so obviously you can test it out if you want, but hopefully once you've spotted that it's an enlargement, once you've spotted that the scale factor's three there, it's quite nice and easy just to be pretty confident that your center of enlargement's okay once you've joined those up with a ruler and a pencil. Just be aware that you do have to be very, very careful when you are joining those up though. If you are not, um, careful it is you know it's a possibility that the lines aren't going to perfectly match up on a coordinate but you can normally see where where it actually is that they should have joined up if you've not done it super accurately but obviously just try and do this as accurately as you can let's have a look at one more before we finish okay so this question says describe fully the single transformation that maps shape c onto shape t so that is going from c down to t so it is going from the bigger down to the smaller shape this time so obviously we do need to say it's an enlargement so it's an enlargement Again, even though we are making the shape smaller this time, so it's gonna be a fractional enlargement. Now having a look at the length of the shape, look, the base of the big triangle is one, two, three, four, five, six along. So that's six along. And the base of the smaller one here is one, two, so two along. So very similar numbers here as I pick those ones there. But we're going from the big one down to the little one. So our, our, I mean, we can actually do this in two ways. We, technically, we should do two divided by six. Now, two divided by six, if I write that as a fraction and simplify it, two over six is one third. So you can get it that way. Or if you feel more confident, just doing six divided by two and getting three and then happy to obviously do the reciprocal of that or flipping it over, so three over one, flip that over is one third, and you can get the scale factor that way. Okay, so it's up to you which way you do it there, but obviously thinking about whatever number it was, if it was two, it would be a half going backwards, if it was four, it'd be a quarter going backwards, and obviously just thinking about the logic there. So we've got a scale factor of a third, there we go, scale factor one over three, and then obviously just to finish this off, you just need to find your center of enlargement. Now I think this is a very similar center of enlargement to the last one, but if we actually go about just picking some points here, let's have a look, we've got this one, bottom left, and this one, you can pick any of them you like. Joining those up gets you there, and then picking up another point, let's go for the bottom one again, over here and over here, and just joining those up really nice and carefully. There you are looking, we get that center of enlargement there, crossing over at the origin. It's not always at the origin, but just for these particular ones on the screen, it was a bit easier to do ones that joined at the origin. Okay, so there we go. So we would just say center 
and obviously I can call the origin center zero, but I'm, I always just label it as a coordinate, so center zero, zero. And there we go, that's how you describe an enlargement as well. So obviously stating that it's an enlargement, finding what the scale factor is there, and just being very careful as to what the question's asking. Is it going from the smaller to the bigger shape, or is it going from the bigger shape down to the smaller shape? That will obviously dictate here whether the scale factor is three or whether it's a third, so you need to be very careful with that. And obviously just then using your ruler and a pencil to find your center enlargement, and hopefully that looks quite nice and easy there. But that is obviously uh, us finished for enlargements. The next video is gonna be um, on negative enlargement. That's obviously for the higher tier only. So this, uh, these kind of types of enlargements are across both tiers there. Um, but that's the end of the video. If you found that useful, if it was helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.